There's no doubt that Her Majesty the Queen of England was one of the wealthiest and most powerful monarchs in the entire world. Being the longest ruling monarch in the history of the world, she enjoyed easy access to luxuries such as flashy automobiles, expansive palaces, and glittering tiaras. Queen Elizabeth II lived her life to the fullest. Let's take a look inside the luxury lifestyle of Queen Elizabeth II, so stay tuned. Queen Elizabeth II, who recently passed away after sitting on the throne for the past seven decades, left behind a diverse and intricate collection of assets that contributed to the wealth and income of her family. You can probably picture how she lived her life. It was luxury all the way. Luxurious Residence Buckingham Palace in London was the Queen's primary residence throughout her reign. It's located within the city of Westminster, one of the boroughs that make up London. The enormous palace contains a total of 775 rooms. Wow! 78 of those rooms are designated as bathrooms. Let's tour some of the chambers, such as the state rooms. These are the chambers where the queen entertains and spends time with her guests. It has a substantial bronze stairway with intricate carvings named Grand Staircase. The palace is adorned with exquisite works of art, timepieces, and the highest quality porcelain. Since there are so many analog clocks, two employees, horological conservators, were responsible for winding and maintaining them. Also, enormous verdant gardens may be found on the grounds of Buckingham Palace, with a lake approximately three acres in size. The garden parties that Queen Elizabeth threw were naturally held in the garden located outside the palace. Queen Elizabeth's Windsor Castle if you think Buckingham Palace is impressive, you'll be absolutely floored when you see Windsor Castle, another royal family property. It's one of the six residences that belonged to the Queen. Reader's Digest Canada states that the castle has around 1,000 chambers. 1,000! It's difficult to picture yourself living in a house of that size. This has been home to members of the British royal family for a century, making it the largest continually inhabited castle in the world. Concerning the history of Queen Elizabeth at Windsor Castle, she spent a significant amount of her childhood there. It was alleged in Reader's Digest Canada that she and her sister Princess Margaret hid there during the bombardment of London during World War II. Also, royal weddings have been held in Windsor Castle, the most recent of which was that of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. As of October 2018, a grand total of 17 weddings have been celebrated in the castle. Queen Elizabeth also had a summer home worth over $100 million. According to Forbes estimates, Queen Elizabeth's Scottish Castle Balmoral is worth $140 million. It's rumored to be her preferred palace of residence, as she spends a part of the summer there every year. When the Queen was at Balmoral, she enjoyed going for drives, riding horses, and generally spending time in the great outdoors. Given that the estate encompasses 50,000 acres, there is ample room for vegetation. A total of 150 buildings make up Balmoral, each of which is surrounded by a large number of gardens. One of Queen Elizabeth's tiaras contains nearly a hundred rubies. The extensive and costly jewelry collection that Queen Elizabeth had is undoubtedly one of the most desirable aspects of her life. Tiaras are especially alluring since they are traditionally worn by members of the royal family. There's no doubt that the Queen possessed a large number of tiaras, but there is one in particular that features an extraordinary quantity of precious stones. The Burmese ruby tiara owned by Queen Elizabeth boasts a staggering 96 rubies. They were a wedding present from Myanmar, known as Burma, to the bride and groom, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, upon marriage. Even though this occurred in the 1940s, she did not have the jewels set into a tiara until the 1970s. If you think that's amazing, you should know that she also wore a crown with over 2,000 diamonds and other gems. Since the 1930s, all coronations, including the Queen's own, have traditionally been conducted with the imperial state crown placed on the head of the new monarch. According to the royal dresser Angela Kelly, the Queen maintains those jewels by using gin to clean them. Kelly disclosed to the Daily Mail that she uses a solution composed of water and alcohol to polish the Queen's jewelry. Who would have guessed? But before that, do you want to know about the luxury lifestyle of other world leaders? Then all you have to do is click on the subscribe button. Let's move on. Queen Elizabeth loved expensive purses. What kind of woman wouldn't put her cash toward purchasing handbags from expensive brands? Well, not Queen Elizabeth. She had always been a devoted supporter of the luxurious brand Lawner. 
This is presumably because her mother gave the then princess her very first lawner bag in the 1950s, and ever since then, she has been completely obsessed with the brand. The Queen Mother was a huge lover of the Lawner brand, and Queen Elizabeth still had the purses that her mother purchased from the company. Gerald Bodmer, the CEO of Lawner London, was quoted saying that Queen Elizabeth owned 200 handbags made by them. Aside from that, she utilized them to communicate with her assistants, so they were more than just purses to her. The Queen was reportedly able to signal to her staff that she would like to exit a conversation by switching the location of her purse from her left arm to her right arm. Sneaky, right? Queen Elizabeth was known for her extensive journeys around the globe. Because of her position as a monarch, Queen Elizabeth was required to undertake a lot of international travel. In 1952, the year she became Queen of England, she made her maiden voyage as the monarch to the African nation of Kenya. During her reign, she has reportedly visited more than 120 different nations. Her most frequent destination was Canada, which she had been to at least 27 times, making it a strong contender for the title of her obvious top choice. However, do you know that she never used a passport to travel? Well, this is because all British passports are granted in the Queen's name. This means that the Queen didn't require a passport for herself when traveling. Royal Plane and Train the travel needs of Queen Elizabeth required her to make frequent use of the private aircraft at her disposal, so she traveled in the Royal Air Force Jet Voyager to get to where she needed to be. The jet is accessible to government officials, members of the royal family, and their immediate families. However, the Queen had been known to take rails occasionally. She took a trip to her estate in Sandringham located in Norfolk every year. Traditionally, members of the royal family spent Christmas in that location, and when she made those journeys, she took a regular passenger train. Having said that, this doesn't mean there's no royal train. Queen Elizabeth owned racehorses. The Queen was the proud owner of her very own racehorses. She was a regular at the horse races and was known to make trips to Kentucky to check out the state's several stud farms. However, she had always had a deep affection for horses. She was only three years old when she took her first ride on a horse and received her very first pony when she was four years old. In addition, Queen Elizabeth did more with horses than merely watch races. She also competed with them. But of course, not while they competed in the race. The Queen's interest in horses had allowed her to amass a sizable fortune throughout the years. According to Reader's Digest, as of 2017, she had accumulated $9.4 million in earnings from more than 450 races that her racehorses had won. According to the Queen's racing advisor, John Warren, who interviewed The Telegraph, she would have been an excellent instructor if she hadn't been crowned queen in the first place. She is incredibly sensitive and possesses a natural passion for horses. Queen Elizabeth owned multiple luxury cars. It's said that the queen enjoyed driving even when she didn't travel very far. It was possible to see her on the way to church or walking around the fields of her country house. Even though she was remaining in the area, she had several vehicle choices. In photographs, the Queen was frequently shown seated behind the wheel of her Range Rover, but the rest of the royal family can also be seen traveling in Jaguars on occasion. Queen Elizabeth also possessed a Bentley State Limousine. It was custom crafted for her Golden Jubilee in the year 2002. However, that wasn't the only Bentley she had. When the Bentley Bentayga was released in 2015, the automaker made it possible for her to purchase the first model. Even if it's the priciest SUV in the world, there's no question that she could pay for it. In addition, it's the quickest SUV on the market. Therefore, it's possible that the Queen enjoyed racing around her estate in it. Queen Elizabeth's Massive Fine Art Collection Since Queen Elizabeth owned such an extensive collection of artworks, she employed an employee whose main responsibility was to look after all of them. Desmond Shaw Taylor served as surveyor of the Queen's pictures, an official title for the position. About one million books, paintings, furnishings, and other items are part of the Royal Collection, the name given to the range of artwork owned by the Queen. This magnificent collection contains a few of Leonardo da Vinci's hand-drawn works, although some of the artwork is stored away in museums and other institutions. It was estimated that tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of items from the Royal Collection were loaned out to various galleries and museums. However, if you want to see some artwork for yourself, you don't have to go to England. Queen Elizabeth had her very own ATM. How much of a time saver do you think it would be to have a personal ATM in your home? Buckingham Palace, the monarch's official residence, is home to the monarch's very own money machine. The provision of such services was made possible by the British banking firm Coates, which enjoys the patronage of the British royal family. 
The palace has several useful amenities in addition to the automated teller machine. Aside from ever having to make a trip to the bank, the queen is also exempt from going to the post office because there's one in Buckingham Palace. There you have it, inside the luxury life of Queen Elizabeth II. Watch our next videos on the channel.